that I am making this vi these videos based on my personal experiences. I'm not an expert with um, admissions and education and career. Um, I am still in the process of learning, but I wanted to share my experiences with students because it took me a long time to learn a lot of things on my own, and uh, I felt like I had no guidance. A lot of the things that are available to us, we are not aware of because we don't, we are not exposed to that kind of information, and it's not very easy to find that. So, my videos, um, my intention in this video is just to share my experiences, and um, I'm just saying that it, this this video is only on how to get funding. It doesn't speak about getting admission in PhD. I do want to make videos on that. But I, all I want to say is that um, it's not necessarily sometimes you want something in life and that's, that may not be what life or nature wants out of you. Um, that's, that's how I see it. So my intention was to do a PhD. My dream was to do a PhD. But I was also very prepared that if I don't do a PhD, I would have been equally happy satisfied doing something else alternatively in india so i hope that you also see these videos with the same intention um that we want to try our best to get something and achieve to dream about something and achieve that but that's not the only way one way of doing something in life sometimes you feel like if i don't get into this college my life will not be the same it may not necessarily be the truth you can still do a lot in life without having that one thing that you thought that you need to be successful and um, yeah and to me success is just it includes a lot of your own happiness and just being able to do what you like and being good at it so yeah i hope you enjoy this video. hi everyone i'm janvi and i'm going to make a video today on how a phd is funded and this is a very, going to be a very simple video. I'm not going into too much depth, but I also didn't know for a very long time. Uh, as a student, I wanted to study abroad. America was a dream. Um, like someone in the comment mentioned that it's almost every student student's dream, especially if they enjoy their education. So I always wanted to study abroad, but I knew that it takes, you know, you have to take all of these loans and then you're in debt and then you can't come back home and I've heard of those stories uh, especially if you're in a non, non stem course then it's hard to maybe hard to find a job or something like that so I definitely didn't want to take a risk of taking a huge loan and then coming abroad that was not something that I definitely wanted to do because I would have rather I would have rather been in India I didn't know about the fact that PhDs are generally funded I, ho I heard of certain scholarships, you know, the famous scholarships that you get, um, which is like fully funded. But I did not know that uh, you don't necessarily, I mean, that's not the only way to get funded because those scholarships are, they have certain requirements and then you, it's not necessary that everybody fits into those categories. Like certain scholarships require you to have a certain amount of years of work experience, but then that takes away some years of your life. And then still, if there's no guarantee, so I didn't know that there is still a way to be fully funded abroad um, and I discovered it in the process of trying to search for these scholarship, full funding scholarships and then I learned that PhD beat in any, almost any university, I won't say every university PhDs are um, funded but PhD in almost any university, any good reputed university is fully funded. Um, and then there are questions about do they fund your education or do they also fund your stay so i'll tell you how that works so um, it depends on university to university and course to course um, so the university has different different assistantships that phd students generally apply for certain uh, courses as so, as long as soon as you get admission in that course you immediately get a you get immediately get funded by an assistantship within the department so an assistantship basically means that you're either assisting a professor or you're doing certain work, but you're not the main person doing it. You're under somebody's supervision. You're still learning. Uh, and there are different types of assistantships. So there can be a graduate assistantship, which means that you're doing graduate, um, a graduate job. Some people do jobs like um, they work on making, they work, say, for example, in an international or students organization and they they work on making events and planning events and uh, collecting students and taking them out because the university has a certain amount of funds for that another type is a teaching assistantship which is you um, can 
you know, for example, I have a friend who's doing a PhD in chemistry. As soon as they get in admission in chemistry, or even a friend in computer science, as soon as they get admission, they are uh, they work under a certain professor, and they are a teaching assistant to that professor. So your job varies depending on your professor. So you can either teach a full course, or that is, I mean, in lesser cases. But yeah, sometimes students do end up teaching courses. Uh, mainly, maybe the course might be designed by professor. It just depends. Or some students don't teach teach exactly. They they just help the help in grading or holding discussion. So the professor might do the teaching part, and students might just hold lab hours, or they might hold discussions or correct papers. So a lot of things. It, it depends on department to department. My current assistantship requires me to do some of both. Like majorly, I'll be. in one of the semesters i'll be teaching the course by myself so it depends on what um, you have to what your assistantship is another type of assistantship is like a research assistantship um like i have a friend in uh, who's doing a phd in um, neurocognition and uh, she has to she's a research assistant so she works in a lab uh, and she helps with the research so uh, professors here are funded for research and they have funding to also pay graduate students so they remove a budget out of that and then they hire graduate students and majorly the first preference goes to phd students you know a lot of i mean some departments also have a big cohort coming in for a phd like chemistry and um some of the sciences but say in my course i'm doing a phd in counseling psychology we only i mean on an average so far it's been like 5 to 7 people sometimes can be more a little more but there is a limit you can't have like 20 people or 15 people in a phd so there are lesser people so funding is almost guaranteed like you you are likely to because they need the clinical psychology department basically the psychology department needs teaching assistants to teach psychology courses there are other opportunities um, which help you do counseling while you are but then those opportunities require a masters if you get an assistantship if you get a graduate assistantship which requires you to do counseling maybe you might have a masters and you can just do counseling for 20 hours and these are generally either 10 hour assistantships which pay which are, which pay you for 10 hours or there are 20 hour per week assistantships which pay you for 20 hours now it depends on college to college but um, in a number of colleges that i have seen and at least in, in my college in my university this is the case that they um, the assistantship comes with your ins- uh, health insurance so they pay like 90% of your insurance you just pay 10% which is literally very little it's almost nothing um i think people might pay more in india for us uh, for their insurance so you get and that insurance is amazing it covers everything um such that something like say therapy costs you zero because you don't have to pay anything on your side if you choose that particular sort of an insurance or i cut my finger once and i had to pay like 10 dollars for a bill which was more than i don't know how many 100 dollars so it's a good insurance that you're covered with so they pay most of the insurance and then because you're a student employee they call you a student employee your tuition cost is covered by the department so in in some of the, like in my department because i'm a so my whoever hires me pays for my tuition cost and because i'm a student employee i don't get but my tuition cost would not be as much as an international students cost so they can they have to pay a little lesser than that but they pay the whole i mean they pay they pay the full resident cost so whatever it is for a resident here in iowa um they pay for that cost and so the your tuition is covered your health insurance is covered and then on top of it they pay you a stipend and now how much stipend they pay you it completely depends on state to state so i got into another university uh which was paying more most stipend than this but then that that was an expensive city so you need that much amount for living there you might pay a huge amount for rent like if you go to new york or something people pay a lot lot of rent uh in that place i have a friend who pays who has a roommate and still pays like 3000 dollars per month for rent so in those places you might get a little higher stipend although yeah people call it in america they call, they do, you don't it's not like you get paid a lot but i think being an indian student and um it it is sufficient to live a good lifestyle you can have your car you can have a you can have you can live in your own apartment 
uh, without roommates. That's what most PhD students. That's what my most pro people in my program did. So that's that's what I did too. That people don't live in roommates with roommates anymore because now they're and it's like a long course and it's like sometimes it's five years, six years. Um, so people are older. Some people even have kids, families. So I think it's sufficient for you to be able to. Uh, live by yourself and comfortably it's not like you can't go to restaurants you can't go for a haircut or small things like that you can't buy the groceries like you would have bought in india or in your home country so i think that's how phd students are funded um, in simple words they get assistantships and because they get assistantships they are student employed now some master students also get paid uh, similarly but um, the first preference that what that what i have heard is that they give phd students because a lot of them already come with a certain level of experience um a lot of them already have a masters or that they're doing a phd they're getting that sort of training or it's teaching and these kinds of roles help them better and phd also has a fewer number of students as compared to undergraduate students so um it's almost impossible for you to not be funded um as a phd student especially if you come from a university which offers opportunities for funding now psychology also has a psyd degree and which i have heard i don't know a lot about it personally but from what i've heard from people here in the us and known people who had that degree that degree you have to pay and there are some other private colleges institutions where you have to also pay for a phd but i've heard this from my american friends that if you have to pay for graduate college because it's going to be a five year phd especially if you're doing phd then it's not worth it because you'll be in debts you you're paying huge fees and maybe you might get a job after that that's true but 5 years you're paying huge fees so mm, yeah i think it's a decision that you might want to consider okay i hope this helps and um, if you have any questions to feel free to ask me in the comments i'll try to answer as much as i can and yeah this is something very simple but i also did not know a lot about it um until i had to go through the whole process of um, these scholarships and then in the process i learned that oh most pages can be still